Contradictions are removed before consequences. Christ with sin is forsaken before he be punished. The pen sub might say, no, the consequences were immediate. And then I would say, no, because Christ bore them as instantly as we did them, preventing any wrath to pay off. As head, he filters everything from the start, totally mediates. A misunderstanding may begin. I talk about sins being filtered by Christ's intent for believers. But a pen sub might get me wrong and say, it's only the knowledge from whence it sprung, regardless of the now knowledge. The sin comes with the original intent. It cannot be redeemed by new knowledge, nor was Christ more condemned for the sins which he bore, having more knowledge than us. To that misunderstanding, I respond, the sin may retain its original knowledge. It is not made good by a change of intention. Rather, it's filtered out by the intention of Christ. Anyway, God doesn't get along with sin, thus puts it on the lamb to go bye-bye. The lamb requires no punishment. Consequences don't need to be activated. Since Jesus dies as our sin and curse, since in the flesh he's crushed and forsaken, then he needs not pay punishment, consequences for sin. Those consequences die away because he bore them in his body. God's wrath needs not be satisfied. There's no need to add penalty substitution to the Bible. Forsaken, not punished, cut off, to not have to bear a penalty substitution punishment if there were such a thing. It would be wrong for Jesus to offer those sins to God and thereby take the punishment rather than putting it away. Christ keeps those sins from provoking God. God is no longer wrathful toward us or even about those inanimate sins which Christ condemns and never mean to offer to God as we would. Thus Christ prevents a need for P.S. Christ gets rid of the possibility of P.S. by dying. It would be wrong for him to pay for sin. Christ is the only one that can mean sin for us. Our only way to sin is through him, which is impossible now.